Okay, so picture this. You're trying to describe, you know, a, a really breathtaking winter scene. Yeah. But words like, you know, the typical cold and snowy, they just don't quite cut it. Right. How do you capture that delicate frost on a window pane yeah. or, um, you know, the raw power of an avalanche or the vastness of a frozen tundra? It's like um, almost like trying to paint a picture with a limited palette. Yeah. You know, we really need the right words to truly evoke what winter landscapes are all about. Exactly. And that's where today's deep dive comes in. Yeah. We're going to be exploring 12 um, fascinating nouns that go way beyond just the basics of describing winter. That's right. Adding some some what? depth, some nuance to your winter vocabulary. Yeah. Think of it as unlocking like a treasure chest of descriptive language. Yeah. You know, it's perfect for anyone who wants to elevate their writing or just, you know, even if you just appreciate the beauty of winter, this is going to this is going to help you out. Absolutely. Yeah. So our source today is an article called 12 Nouns to Describe Winter in Snowy Landscapes. It's packed with definitions and examples, but we're going to be taking things a step further, like we always do. We are. Um, digging into the nuances. Right. And really exploring how these words can be used effectively. Yeah, we'll kind of uncover those um, those hidden layers of meaning. Yeah. And connect these words to, to broader concepts so you really have a, a richer understanding of how to use them. I love that. Yeah. Now, before we jump in, I'm just curious. Yeah. What are some of your favorite things about winter? Oh, that's a great question. What words come to mind when you picture a snowy landscape? Um, for me, it's that sense of stillness and transformation. I love that. Like the world feels hushed and almost magical, like a blank canvas. Yes. Just waiting to be filled with new possibilities. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. And speaking of canvases, our article starts with um, kind of everyday winter wonders. Right. Like those scenes that we might encounter, you know, right outside our doorstep. Right. These are like the building blocks of our winter vocabulary. Yeah, I love it. The first word that jumps out at me is snowdrift. Okay. Now we all know what snow is, but a snowdrift isn't just any pile of snow. Right. It's It's been sculpted by the wind, right. creating these massive mounds that can completely transform a landscape. Exactly, it evokes a sense of, you know, isolation. Yeah. The power of nature to like reshape the familiar. I love that. Think about how a snowdrift might like block a path yeah. Forcing you to make a detour or how it might create this sense of shelter and protection in a really harsh environment. It's like nature's architecture. Yes. You know, shaping the way we experience the world around us. It really is. And from the imposing presence of a snowdrift. Yeah. We move to something um, much more delicate. Frost. Ah, uh, frost. Yeah. That ethereal layer of ice crystals yeah. that transforms the ordinary into the extraordinary. It really does. Think of a window pane covered in those intricate frost patterns. So beautiful. Or a blade of grass shimmering with that delicate coating. Yeah. It adds a touch of elegance and fragility to a winter scene. It's like nature's calligraphy, isn't it? It really is. Each frost pattern unique. Totally. A fleeting work of art that disappears when the sun comes up. And it's so versatile in writing, too. Frost yeah. can symbolize, you know, a cold heart, yeah. a fleeting moment, or even the stillness of a winter morning. Right. It's it's a word loaded with symbolic potential. Yeah. It's amazing how something so delicate can carry so much weight. I know. Both visually and metaphorically. It is. And speaking of um, contrasting elements, our next word brings a bit of danger to the mix. Okay. Icicles. Icicles. Yes. What do you think about those? Icicles are fascinating, aren't they? They are. Those crystal daggers hanging precariously from from rooftops and branches. Yeah. They embody that duality of beauty and danger that winter often presents, you know? I remember as a kid being so fascinated by them. Yes. But also, like, warned to stay clear. Of course. You know, because there are sharp points and the potential for them to fall. Make them, you know, such a captivating yet hazardous part of a winter landscape. They also add a sense of verticality to a scene. You know, sure. They draw the eye upward right, and yeah. create a sense of unease. Yeah. Think about how writers use icicles to foreshadow danger right. or create a sense of suspense. Yeah, it's a reminder that even in the midst of beauty, winter can be a formidable force. Absolutely. And these everyday wonders are just a glimpse into the rich vocabulary yeah. you can use to describe winter landscapes. Yeah, we've only just scratched the surface. We have! Stick with us as we continue our deep dive and explore even more captivating winter words in part two. Welcome back, everybody. Yes, welcome back. We've explored some of those like everyday winter wonders. Right. 
But now it's time to venture into like more dramatic territory. That's right. Yeah. Our next set of words kind of takes us to snowy fields and mountainous terrain. Yeah. Where those forces of nature are really on display. Yeah. And the first word that comes to mind is avalanche. Ooh. It just, it sends shivers down my spine just hearing it. It does. It evokes such a sense of like raw power and unpredictability. It's, it's a force of nature that demands respect. Yes. Imagine this, like wall of snow and ice and debris just thundering down a mountainside right reshaping the landscape in an instant oh wow it's it's a stark reminder of how you know powerful and unforgiving nature can be it's like the mountain itself is releasing a primal roar yes a sudden burst of energy that can change everything in its path totally wow and speaking of forces that shape landscapes we can't forget about glaciers. Oh, glaciers are fascinating. They are. These like massive rivers of ice that have been slowly carving their way through mountains for centuries. Right. Shaping valleys and creating just breathtaking formations. It's incredible. It's a testament to the power of time and the relentless forces of nature, really. Yeah, they're like nature sculptors, patiently carving away at the earth. They are. Leaving behind this legacy that could be seen for generations. Yes. Yeah. It's true. You know, it's humbling to think about the vastness of time that is encapsulated in a single glacier. It makes our human time scale seem incredibly fleeting, doesn't it? It really does. Yeah. And from these monumental formations, we shift our focus to something incredibly delicate and intricate. The snowflake. Ah, yes. Each one, um, you know, a tiny masterpiece, a unique crystal formation that seems almost too beautiful to be real. Right. Um, blanketing the world in this pristine layer of white, transforming even the most mundane landscapes into something magical. Yeah, it's amazing to think about the sheer number of snowflakes right. that fall during a single snowfall, each one different, right. yet they all kind of contribute to that like iconic winter scene. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, and now let's journey to a place where snow reigns supreme. The tundra. The tundra. Yeah, what comes to mind when you hear that word? A sense of vastness and isolation. Yes. Kind of a stark yet beautiful landscape that stretches as far as the eye can see. Yeah. It's a place where only the hardiest plants and animals can survive. Right. Those long, harsh winters. It's incredible. It's a testament to the resilience of life, even in the face of, like, extreme conditions. I love that. The tundra reminds us that beauty can exist. Yes. Even in the most challenging environments. Absolutely. And speaking of challenges, our next word might not be as visually dramatic as an avalanche or a glacier. Right. But it plays a crucial role in shaping these frozen landscapes. Yeah. Permafrost. Yeah, permafrost is like the foundation of these cold regions. It's, oh, yeah. it's that layer of permanently frozen ground yes. that influences everything above it. Wow. You know, it affects drainage, plant growth, yeah. even the stability of structures built upon it. It's like this hidden force shaping the landscape from below. Totally. A constant reminder of winter's like enduring presence. Yeah, it's fascinating to think about how something invisible yes. can have such a profound impact right. on the world above. Absolutely. It highlights the interconnectedness of natural systems. Yes. How something hidden beneath the surface can like influence the entire ecosystem. Oh, wow. And now let's scale things up again. Okay. From the ground to a feature that's even larger than a glacier, hmm. the ice field. An ice field. Yeah, what do you think about those? An ice field is like a sprawling kingdom of ice. Yes. Bigger than a glacier, but smaller than an ice cap. Right. Imagine a vast undulating expanse of white stretching as far as the eye can see I'm trying to. It's a landscape that evokes a sense of like awe and wonder. Yes. You know, standing on the edge of an ice field, yeah. you feel dwarfed by its immensity. Right. A tiny speck in a world of ice. It's humbling. It's a humbling experience that, that reminds us of the power and majesty of nature. Yes, it really does. Yeah. And from the vastness of an ice field, we turn our attention to something exquisitely delicate. Hoarfrost. Hoarfrost is nature's lace work. Beautiful. A delicate coating of ice crystals yeah. that transforms the ordinary into the extraordinary. Yeah. Think of branches adorned with with those feathery ice crystals mm -hmm. or spider webs transformed into like glittering masterpieces. It's it's like 
Frost taken to a whole new level of artistry. It is. A reminder that even in the depths of winter, yeah. beauty can be found in the most unexpected places. It highlights the those intricate details of nature, yeah. showcasing the delicate balance between ice and water and air. I love that. And finally, we come to a word yes. that evokes the raw fury of winter. Okay. The blizzard. The blizzard, oh yeah. More than just a snowstorm. Right. It's a full-on assault of wind and snow and freezing temperatures, yeah. creating a whiteout right. that can bring even the most seasoned traveler to a standstill. Wow. It's a force of nature that demands respect. It really does. You know, blizzards can disrupt travel, yeah. isolate communities, reshape landscapes with those powerful winds and heavy snowfall. It's true. They're a reminder that winter can be as dangerous as it is beautiful. Yeah, it's it's a powerful reminder that we are ultimately at the mercy of nature's whims. We are. You know, we've journeyed from the delicate beauty of snowflakes to the raw power of blizzards. We have. And everything in between. Yeah. We've explored the vastness of glaciers and ice fields and the subtle influence of permafrost. It's been quite a journey. It really has. Yeah. And along the way, we've uncovered this rich vocabulary. Right. That allows us to truly appreciate... Um, the complexity and beauty of winter landscapes. And our exploration isn't over yet. That's right. Stick with us yeah. as we delve deeper into the so what of all this. Okay. And discover how you can use these words to enhance your own descriptions. So we've scaled mountains of ice, navigated frozen deserts, and even witnessed the fury of a blizzard, all through the power of words. We have. But you know, here's the real question. Yeah. How can you use these words right. to enrich your own writing and communication? It's like having, um, a set of high quality tools you wouldn't use a butter knife to chop wood right chop. Mm. similarly choosing the right word can make all the difference in how effectively you convey you know a scene a feeling yeah. or even an idea exactly so instead of simply saying you know it was cold and snowy right you can now paint this vivid picture with words like hoarfrost snowdrift or blizzard exactly each word evokes a specific image. It does. And a, and a unique set of emotions. Think about it this way. You're not just describing a winter scene. Yeah. You're you're transporting your reader or listener right. right into the heart of that experience. Yes. You know, the right word can make them feel the chill in the air. Right. The crunch of snow underfoot or the awe-inspiring vastness of a glacier. It's about creating a sensory experience through language. Yes. Going beyond the visual and, uh, and engaging all the senses. Yeah. Um, and what's fascinating is how these words can also be used metaphorically. Oh, for sure. You know, adding depth and symbolism to your writing. Absolutely. Frost, for example, can mm -hmm. represent more than just like a layer of ice. Right. It can symbolize a cold heart, a fleeting moment, or even the fragility of life. Right. Iceberg can represent hidden dangers or yeah. or like the tip of a much larger issue. It's amazing how a single word can carry so much weight and meaning. It really is. It's like unlocking a secret code. Yeah. Revealing all these layers of interpretation that go beyond the surface level. Absolutely. And that's the beauty of language. It is. It allows us to express... Um, not just what we see, but also what we feel and think. Right. These 12 words are just a starting point. They are. There's a whole world of winter vocabulary out there waiting to be explored. Absolutely. But here's a final challenge for you. And for me, okay. we focus on the visual aspects of winter. Right. But what about the other senses? Yes. How can you capture those like unique sounds of winter? Yeah. You know, like the crunch of fresh snow, the howling wind, or the eerie silence of a frozen forest. Don't forget about the smells either. Yes, the smell. That, that crisp, clean scent of freezing air. Yeah. The earthy aroma of pine needles under a blanket of snow. I love that. Or even the warm, comforting smell of a wood-burning fireplace on a cold winter night. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Engaging those other senses can create a truly immersive experience. It does. For your audience. Absolutely. Making your descriptions come alive in a whole new way. For sure. So the next time you're writing about winter, Remember to go beyond the visual. Yes. Tap into those other senses. Experiment with these powerful words and see what winter wonders you can create. That wraps up our deep dive into the fascinating vocabulary of winter. Yes, it does. We hope you've enjoyed the journey and discovered some new tools to add to your linguistic arsenal. Absolutely. Happy exploring. Thank you so much for joining me on this deep dive. It's been a pleasure as always. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me.